Welcome to the number one source for information, news, and opinion on your Columbus Blue Jackets. This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. You can also find the audio version on the CBJ Radio SoundCloud page, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play Music, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Well, there's no doubt that it's sad, but there's also no doubt that it is over. The Blue Jackets 2019-2020 season came to a screeching halt in Game 5 of their Stanley Cup playoff quarterfinal series with the Tampa Bay Lightning when the Blue Jackets blew a two-goal lead in the third period and then fell to the Lightning in overtime by the score of 5-4, to thus bringing what was in many ways a surprising season and a fun season and a good season to a very disappointing season end. And that's the big word today, disappointing. Let's go through uh, the scoring recap and the, the game recap, and it's being brought to you by Stanley Steamer. Get back to clean. Blue Jackets, they got off to a slow start in that game as they uh, fell behind two to nothing. And I'll be honest with you, two to nothing in the first period for a Tampa Bay Lightning team that all they had to do was win to move on. I thought maybe the Blue Jackets had had enough early in that game. I thought maybe when it was two to nothing that they might just fold. Boy, was I wrong. And I'm sorry for being wrong. Actually, I'm happy to be wrong for that. But the Tampa Bay Lightning played like they looked like the Blue Jackets might be content with that too because they let up. And then the Blue Jackets came to life. They got a power play. Nick Foligno ended up uh, scoring not on the power play, but a second or two after it had ended. And it was a two-to-one game. And all of a sudden, they tie the game at two goals apiece. And now you're saying, all right, here we are, second period, 2-2 game. And with under 16 seconds left, Alexander Wenberg scores to make it 3-2. to two. And now you've really got to feel good, right? You have to feel good. You came back from a 2-0 deficit. You're leading 3-2. to two. You've got 20 minutes to play. Then you want to feel even better? You get another goal, 4-2. to two. And now you have a real chance. And then you get a power play, and you can't convert on it. And then the Tampa Bay Lightning starts to chip away. Kevin Chattenkirk scores to make it 4-3. Still plenty of time left, like seven-plus minutes left in the game. And then eventually with the goaltender pool, tell me and stop me if you've heard this one before, they gave up the tying goal. An unfortunate goal, one that goes off a skate without a distinct kicking motion, by the way. And it ties the game at four. And then in overtime, the Blue Jackets with a very, very unfortunate turnover that results in Braden Point scoring to win the game and send the Blue Jackets packing. So disappointing is the word. I don't know how many other words there are for what happened. It was a roller coaster of emotions. You dropped down a big hill at the beginning, climbed up a big hill, and then dropped down another big hill at the end. Actually, you dropped down a big hill, and then it was a double dip. There was another hill before it was all said and done. I don't know if you've ever ridden on a roller coaster that has a double dip, or they're fun if it's riding roller coaster. They're not real fun when you're watching an elimination game in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So, look, it's tough. It's tough. There's, I know it happens. I get it. I understand. But I'll tell you how I still feel as I sit down to take your questions and answer your questions. This is exactly how I feel. Just like Blue Jackets head coach John Tortorella felt after the game was over. You guys fell down 2 nothing, and then after that, it's one of the most dominating stretches of play that you've had in this postseason. Are you guilty then of playing the clock there in the final eight minutes? No. Two goal lead? No, they had three shots. Next question, Neil McHale, Inside Hockey. Hey, John, I know it's hard after a serious loss to really compress your thoughts, but what has this whole experience been like being in the bubble, you know, being so close to your players, you know, working with them on a day-to-day basis and just mentally seeing them come back after a pause in times that have been unlike any in, you know, human You know what, guys? I'm not going to get into the touchy-feely stuff and the moral victories and all that. You guys be safe. You know, some people love that. Some people hate it. You know what camp I'm in, don't you? You know. I'll tell you anyway. I love it. I love it. Look, 
the guy doesn't want to talk about it. He's really upset. He just rode that roller coaster. He hated the way the ride ended. And he has to come out there and talk to the media. And he just was not in the mood. He did the best thing he could do. He showed up, which you have to show up. And then before he said something that would really get him in trouble, he politely bowed out. And again, I'm sure there are media people that hate that and they think that it's wrong and there's a sense of arrogance there. There's not. Remember, it was this season when John Tortorella complained about the clock the night that Jonas Corposalo got hurt. Remember that. Because he got fined heavily by the league and he was on probation, double secret probation, I think. So he could have been fined more. So he was smart. He went out there. He gave it his best shot, but he knew that he just couldn't do it at that time. I give him credit for knowing. I give him credit for handling it like that. I might be in the minority, but I don't care. He was upset. You're upset. I'm upset. We're all upset. Not the way you wanted to see it end. Not by any means. But I'm here for you. I've asked you for your questions and your comments. And because I've asked and you have responded, I'm going to get to them right now. And I'm going to start with a question that has come in a form that I've got, uh, I would say sporadically, but it wasn't. I think it was one, maybe two other times. And this is a format that I would really like next year to be more uh, relevant uh, would be, I, I, I hope you do it more. That's what I'm trying to say. I hope you do it more. But it's a video question. So let's go to it right now. Hey Bob, this is Josh from Grove City, Ohio, coming to you shortly after our loss in the series to the Lightning here, so uh, naturally feeling a little bummed, but I just had a few things I wanted to mention to you for your last CBJ and 30 Monday mailbag or whenever you're taking questions or comments. I've got three quick things. I've got a question, I have a disappointment to address, and I have a comment. So my question is for next year. Uh, what do you think the biggest thing that the Jackets needs to work on is? Is it the power play? Is it protecting leads, closing them out better? I'd be curious to, to hear your thoughts on that. I have my own thoughts. So that's my question. My disappointment, apart from losing to the Lightning, is your beard. Uh, I think that's actually one of the biggest things that, uh, that caused the Jackets to lose was the fact that you trimmed that bad boy up. I have not heard you address that, address that, excuse me, in a uh, recent podcast. I don't know if I missed it, but uh, what happened to the beard? Because I just have to wonder, had that McElligot beard been going, would we be walking away with a win against the Lightning again? Uh, so that's my, uh, my beef. And my comment is thanks so much for all the content you've put out here recently. You've really kept all of us engaged, and it's been a blast to listen to you again every day, almost this year. So keep on doing what you're doing. I look forward to seeing you next year. Cheers. Well, Josh, let me start with the comments you just made at the end and say thank you. And I really appreciate those comments. They, they mean a lot to me. They really do. I hope you all know that by now, that they do. It's not about me. It's about you. And I appreciate you being there. Thanks for sending the video. It's, it's awesome. All right, now, uh, what do the Blue Jackets need to address the most? Power play or holding on to late leads? I think both, but I think the power play has gotten to a point where, my goodness, my goodness. Can I, do I need to say anything other than my goodness? I don't think so. So they, they've got to do something about that. And that's going to factor into some of these other questions that are going to come here about more offensive skill. There's no doubt about that. Um, the beard. Very interesting you asked that. A couple of weeks ago, I was on with Anthony Rothman on the uh, flagship station of the Blue Jackets Radio Network, 97.1 The Fan. This was before the playoffs started. This was when we were doing the uh, live streams from the Ice House during the camp, but had not started doing games. And he asked me about it, and, and I said, I'll tell you this. Uh, my boys, at least my youngest one, he didn't like it. He wanted to see it go. Uh, my wife felt that I, you know, that I didn't care what her feelings were on it, so she wasn't going to give me an opinion on it. And I said that to me, I wasn't in love with it. It didn't matter one way or the other. It was kind of cool to have a playoff beard. But I said on that show, it's as simple as this. If, if my boss tells me to get rid of it, then I'm going to get rid of it. So. I was, um, 
I got the hint that I got the impression. I shouldn't say the hint. I got the impression that um, some felt that going back to doing games would be better without it. Now, Josh, you could be my agent on this and say that, no, it wasn't because it might have cost the Blue Jackets a series. And you might be right. But, again, um, you know, it was fun. For me, I, I was always planning on taking it off once we went back to work anyway. And then I had it, and you guys started talking about playoff beard. And I was like, man, I never had a beard because it takes me, you know, four and a half months to grow one. So, <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you asking. It's all in fun. It's, uh, um, you know, I, I just appreciate it. I felt like torch right there. I kind of ran out of something and I came back and I, I just appreciate it. All right, let's go to, <laughs> let's go to another, uh, uh, another question. This one is uh, a voice memo. Here we go. Hey, Bobby Mack. This is fakes that wanted a uh, 20 to 30 minute podcast after the big victory against the Maple Leafs. Uh, no worries on that. And I wanted to specifically say that there were multiple times in the coming days right after that that I felt like um, Harry and Dumb and Dumber when Lloyd comes back on the bike and he goes, just when you think, uh, you know, couldn't get any worse, you go and totally redeem yourself uh, because you had a bunch of great content that was coming out uh, late at night uh, or early very early in the morning, which is perfect for people like me that work late and are really getting off work around then, um, to listen to. You had, um, felt like there was maybe even a couple extra podcasts in there, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you for all the content you do, for how you do it. You know, I mean, you, I feel like you do it from a fan's perspective. I'm, I mean, I can tell you're one of us. And there are some people whose names I will not mention. There are just some people who do, we'll just say, some of our team's coverage. And I'm not always convinced that they are, you know, just big fans. Um, you know, people that, you know, will lose a heartbreaking game, say, in overtime, and they'll come and say, wow, that has never happened in the history. Someone let in three goals in the last three minutes of the game. You know, oh, but we had a great game besides that. I mean, come on, you know, we're hurting. Don't lead off something like with that. But anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. I love your work. Um, big fan. I'm crushed that we lost. Crushed that we're not going to see hockey again to December. And I, I, don't, I don't know what we should do. But I wanted to ask you if we had to trade one of the goaltenders, Elvis Corpusalo, which would you pick if you had to trade one? I'm tempted to add in Kill Venice and uh, Vevelinen, um, but I just think that a goalie controversy, not necessarily a controversy, but we've got two great young goalies. Um, there are positives on both. Um, I, you know, and I'm not putting this loss on Corpusalo. Um, I was just, I was a little disappointed the last couple games, but when someone stops 85 shots one game and sets an NHL record, um, I think you got to cut them a little bit of slack. So that's obviously what I'm doing, but we, we do have two great goalies and it would be great if we just kept them, but I, I'm not sure if that's what the organization will do. Um, I think that they will look to trade defensemen not Jones or Wierenski, and a goalie um, to try to get us some offensive help because that's what we need. But, man, you just you can't give up four goals and expect to beat the Lightning. We can't give up three goals and expect to beat the Lightning. It's got to be the two to nothing shutouts like we had against the Leafs, just not give them any hope. And, um, you know, unfortunately, for whatever reason, we just couldn't do that. But today was a crushing, heartbreaking loss. And um, I'm, I'm beat up. But thank you and go Jackets. I love that. I, I love so much of that, honestly. And, I, and first of all, I, Bakes, I want to thank you for, for the compliments and, and the one of us thing because, first of all, that is what I am. And that's how I want it to come across. I care. I, I work for the team. 
I'm around the players normally, not on this trip. I like the players. I, I get along with them. I'm friends with them. I want them to succeed. When they succeed, it makes my job easier, let's be honest. But I am a fan. And I've, I've spent a lot of time in this organization. Not just the 11 seasons now that I've just completed with the Blue Jackets, but prior to that, all those seasons in Syracuse, right from the very start, right from the 2000-2001 um, season. And what, 10 of those, 11 here. I mean, during the lockout, when there was that lockout and there was no NHL hockey, we were playing in the American Hockey League with Blue Jackets prospects. So, uh, you know, I've been here for a long time. I am a fan. I, I, I want you to feel that. I, I want – when I do a game, I, I want um, – I want you to feel like, man, if that was me, I'd feel the same way, or I'd say the same thing. And that's how I do it, and I'm glad it comes across. So thank you for all of that. Now let me get to your question about uh, which goalie would I trade. Off the top of my head, um, there, there's two answers to that, which doesn't solve anything. I would trade Elvis. Okay, first I would trade, to be honest with you, I'm only saying that because you're asking. I would trade neither of them. I would go through all next year with the both of them, because Jody Shelley said this after the previous game, not uh, yesterday's elimination game, the previous one. If Elvis had been healthy, if he had not gotten hurt against Toronto, if he had been available, he could have spelled Corpus Allo at some point in this series, and he needed to take a day off. There's no doubt. He needed to take a day off. It would have been so helpful. You see other teams doing it. Um, Carolina's played both of their goalies. Um I don't know, Boston played both of theirs, but there's a reason for that. But uh, who else did it? Somebody besides Carolina was uh, – well, Vegas was rotating goalies. They played Leonard and Flurry, So it would have been nice to have that as an option, but it was an option that didn't exist. So I would say trade Elvis Corposalo to me is uh, not only a guy that came in here with more experience, he has now proven himself to be a starting goaltender. I, I don't think there's any argument over what you saw in the playoffs that this guy can be and will be a starting goaltender. Uh, I think he has earned that without question. But he makes less money on the new contract, and his stock might be high. But I will tell you this. There's going to be a lot of goalies on the market uh, this time around. So it's better to keep them both. And then when it comes time, whosoever stock is higher and whichever contract you can trade is the answer. Me, I would keep Corpus Allo. You know that I, am, um, that I lean toward him because he's been around longer. I know him better. That's not a knock on Elvis. I think Elvis is a terrific young player, and I think he's going to be a very good goalie. Um, you know, he, there are areas of his game and his life he's got to grow up and mature, but don't we all? And he spent one year over here, and he had some really, really great moments, and I think he's going to have a lot more great moments. So whichever one you can get the most for is the real answer when the time comes, but that time is not here. And it's, I don't think it's going to be here for a while. Here's another email I got uh, at Bobby Mack at bluejackets.com. It says, I'm still at work, looking forward to getting home and hearing your comments about the game. I'd check in once in a while and see we were down 2-0 and then 2-1, then it was 2-2 and then up 4-2, and I'm thinking we can do this. Then, of course, 4-4 and 5-4 in overtime. I really thought this team could come back and win the series, even if we could have won in overtime. But what an up-and-down game it must have been to call. I'm just curious, was it uh, the Blue Jackets playing bad at times or Tampa just playing better? Was Corpy off today or was it our defense? Again, just so disappointed and a little depressed that the year is over. Thanks again for all that you do, and that's from Hockey Bob. Well, thank you, Hockey Bob. Um, it, uh, I think Corpus Allo was a little bit off. You heard John, uh, John Tortorella say earlier they had three shots. Uh, I think that was his way of getting a message across that uh, he didn't feel Corpus Allo was sharp in that elimination game, and I think that that's fair, honestly. I think it's fair. Uh, he's had better games, no doubt. But uh, he's a tired goalie. He played a lot of minutes, saw lots and lots and lots and lots of shots. Uh, finished with a great goals against average for the playoffs, I mean, or a uh, save percentage for the playoffs. Ridiculous. It's like 941 or something like that. I'm going off the top of my head, but I think that's what it was. Like you normally don't lose when you have numbers like that, but he did. Um, so the, you know, it was one of those days, as it turned out, and the inability to hold a lead with a goaltender pulled baffles me. 
baffles me. All right, let's go to Twitter at Bobby Mac Sports. Mark Carell the second. It's pretty clear what this team needs: a dynamic forward, whether scoring or playmaking. Is this something to look for in trades? Are there any pending UFAs that fit the bill, or is it likely we sit and let the young guys develop? Um, I think it's more of a trade thing. Uh, the young guys will develop; and they need to develop. But I think you, uh, I think you need to deal if you want to get the skill that you're looking for. The only other way to have a really good chance of getting that skill, oh, excuse me, that skill was to not to have made uh, the playoffs and get knocked out by the Maple Leafs and have a 12.5% chance to win the first overall pick. I think that was your only chance of um, really getting – that's your only chance of getting elite skill in the draft, okay? So now you're going to pick where wherever you pick. I don't, I don't even know what the number is right now, nor do I care. But you've got to make a good first-round pick. There's no question about that. Um, but I think if you want somebody elite and an impact guy, you've got to make a trade. Uh, unrestricted free agents, I'm not sure. I, I think there's going to be a lot of guys out there. I, I still I still think it's a hard sell to get uh, a, an impact one to come here. I still think that. I, I, I think if you're going to get an impact guy, you've got to do it in some kind of a trade. Tyler Howard says, uh, I don't have a question. Just wanted to say thank you for all your great work this season, especially during the playoffs. I know it wasn't easy to do these games without fans or have an ideal vantage point. Keep up the great work next season. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. And it wasn't easy without you guys. And it wasn't easy. It, you had to generate a lot of the excitement. And uh, it, it wasn't – I shouldn't say it wasn't natural. I mean, I got excited watching the games. But without the fans, without that energy feeding you, it didn't feel natural. That's the best way to put it. And um, it sucked. I said it before. It absolutely sucked to do the games like that. It was awful. I didn't like it. And, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you, oh, it was okay. And, you know, if I had to do it, would I do it? Yeah, if I had to. If I had no other choice. But it sucks. It's not nearly as good. You, you can't do your job the same way. And, and I hope it didn't come across like that. And I've had a lot of people tell me that it sounded just like I was there on this show and off this show. So thank you. I appreciate that. That's, it is my job to make it be that way, but I'm not going to lie and tell you I liked it because it sucked. It was, I think I've said that four times now because it did. <laughs> it just wasn't that much fun. Uh, not as much fun as it is when you're in the building and it's, and you're, and you're feeling every second of it. Mike Lowe says, I was listening to the broadcast and some guy kept talking about how awesome the two-goal lead was, almost making it sound like the game was over. Weird. Well, Mike, uh, you were hearing the broadcast. I don't know if you were listening to the broadcast. And what I mean is, it was great to have a two-goal lead at that point in time. If I would have told you that with eight minutes left in the third period or ten minutes left in the third period, you would have come back from being down 2-0 and scored four, would you have thought that was great? Probably. But what I said was they got a power play chance. And I said, if you can put the puck in the net on this power play, you can pretty much grab the hammer and the nail to put in the coffin. And then they got nothing on the power play. In fact, it wasn't even a good power play. So, um, you know, listen, I, I felt good about it at that point in time. But I, I didn't say it was over. And I just saw three goals get scored in four minutes in the Toronto series. Um, but, yeah. Was it awesome to have a two-goal lead then? Yeah, it was. I'll stick to that. I'll stick to that. And as I tweeted after the game, you know, if when I talked about putting the nail in the coffin, if they would have scored on that power play, we would have been in the postgame show and not in the overtime. I think that's pretty simple. I think that's quite honest, actually. That's what I think. Uh, what is next here? What is next? Um, what is next? I've got Tim. Tim D. Says, yes, it wasn't the result we all wanted, but I never thought we would have seen our Blue Jackets the remainder of the season. They provided us entertainment over the past few weeks, and for that, I'm good. Time for the Blue Jackets to bring in some goal scorers and get ready for next year. Well said, Tim. Here, here. Um, Heather, we played a hell of a season. Torts needs that Jack Adams trophy. Used a pretty much all-rookie team most of the year. Agree with that as well. No, uh, I have no counter argument to that whatsoever. Uh, David Smith says, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate this team this year? I'm also curious to think uh, if you think giving up goals at the end of the Toronto game and the five overtime loss stuck in their heads, 
There seemed to be signs of that in the Tampa games. Um, scale of one to ten. Uh, well, it was great because you got into the playoffs and probably didn't deserve to with the lineup that was playing every night and due to the fact that you lost some key free agents last summer. So seven, seven, uh, because it just kept you, I think it, it kept us all wanting more. So I'm going to say seven. Um, the, the goals at the end of the games, I, I don't, I don't think that stuck in their heads. I, I just think they, they didn't handle it right. I don't think one situation led to the other uh, so much, although I could be wrong on that, but I, I just think it's, uh, I think they lost mental focus. They lost mental focus, uh, especially yesterday in the overtime, and, and it cost them the game and the series and the season. Cambria Davis, uh, just want to say thanks for doing what you do. Appreciate all the work you put in till next season. Thank you, Cambria. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Steve Humphrey, how do we address our embarrassing lack of offense, pro offensive prowess in the offseason? I think I already told you that. You're going to have to, uh, in my opinion, you're going to have to make a trade. Um, at least one trade. I don't know. Chris Denman says, looking at the pending you uh, unrestricted free agents around the league, who, if anyone, do you see as a potential target for Yarmo? Uh, see, I'm not going to get into that. And I, I alluded to this earlier because, you know, what if uh, like a Mike Hoffman is available? I think he's a UFA. Uh, great shooter. I think the Blue Jackets uh, could use a guy like that. A couple of things. Uh, would he come? And would he sign uh, a long-term deal? Would he sign? And, and then if he does, would he be good for that uh, throughout the terms? Um, I mean, would you get your money's worth out of it? Do you have to overpay? You don't want to overpay. You've got to stay. You've got a flat cap for the next couple of years. You've got to sign Dubois. You've got to sign maybe Josh Anderson. I say maybe because, you know, he could be involved in a trade. Um, so I, I just, I don't know. Um, and let me ask you this. You get all fired up about unrestricted free agents. Was Gus Nyquist, he played. I mean, and he's not supposed to be a, an Artemi Panarin, but would you have liked to see more out of him during the playoffs? Would you have liked to see more goals out of him, more points out of him? I think so. He was an unrestricted free agent. So, again, be careful. Be careful what you wish for when it comes to UFAs. Uh, Nick Gibbs, what's, what's your way too early off-season moves Yarmo and company make? None. You can't. One thing you can't do is, first, you can't make a move. You've got to wait until this is over. You can talk about things, and they have been talking already. There's no doubt in my mind. I, 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 would, I would say they've talked a forward and a defenseman for somebody that can help offensively right now. And maybe even a draft pick if they have to throw a draft pick in there. So you can't do anything, but you can't, you can't do anything by panic. And I think that's something that Yarmo is really good at. I think his patience is it's way better than mine. It is way. I've told him before. I'd trade the whole team. I'd trade them all. And then I'd realize I was wrong after it was too late and I already traded them all. Uh, Michael Gershutz, how do we change the mindset of sitting back and trying to protect the puck instead of continuing to attack? Also, how will the expansion draft affect this team with so much upcoming young talent? Well, the expansion draft thing isn't until next year. Um, you know, the, the key players, they have taken care of much better this time around than last time around. I don't think it's going to have a great effect uh, this time. Um, how do you change the mindset? I, I don't know. that You shouldn't have had to tell them anything. They played like a championship team in the second period. They got the lead. They came to the third, and they backed off. I thought both teams did the same thing yesterday. I thought when both teams had a two-goal lead, they thought they had enough to win the game, and they, uh, they backed off. And it came back to bite them both in the, in the rear end. Although Tampa got a, another chance, and they made the most of it. So I, how do you change that mindset? You, you just you have to have it. I, I, don't know, I don't know how else to say it besides that. It's, um, is it leadership? Maybe. Maybe it's your leader's. I, other than that, I don't know. Scientific goalie says two questions during overtime. Uh, how was how long was the Blue Jackets in the offensive zone? And of that time, how long did they have the puck in the offensive zone? Um, I don't know the numbers, and I'm not going to look them up because if I were to guess, they were in the offensive zone about 12 seconds, and they had the puck about um, six of those seconds. 
maybe. It wasn't long, and I get your point. It wasn't long at all. Jeff Collada says, disappointed how we stopped playing once we had the lead. Our aggressiveness was working well and frustrating Tampa during the first two periods. Then we just turtled and started dumping the puck. Is this game plan sustainable? Can we actually win playing dump and chase hockey? Um, it depends how hard you want to work to go get it after you dump it. But I, but I agree. I, and I just said it. They shouldn't, have, they shouldn't have changed how they were playing. They should have kept pouring it on. That was working. If you're doing something in life that's working, I don't care if it's hockey or anything else. If it's working, don't stop doing it. Free advice for the offseason. Rob the Dirt says, the questions everyone is going to have is clear. We need at least one consistent scoring forward, but getting one in free agency is probably unlikely. But who is available? Um, who, who do we I, – I, this, is, this is worded wrong, but I think it's saying uh, – uh, who do we recently have a shot in getting? Would it likely be a Jeff Carter situation? I don't know what that means. And if you mean getting somebody that doesn't want to be here, uh, he was acquired in a trade. He didn't have a choice. A free agent has a choice. So, um, again, I, I just I went through free agents with you. Michael Fenwick says, "What will the off season look like?" Well, it's actually going to look pretty quick, to be honest with you. I think, believe it or not. I think it's going to look pretty quick because, you know, they're talking about awarding the Stanley Cup uh, at the latest by the 4th of October, I believe it is. Uh, we're already at the 20th of August. So um, I think it'll go by a lot faster than the pause. I hope it does anyway. Benji, my thoughts are, I love how this team plays and they have nothing to hang their heads about. Break here or there and they might still be playing. And with how the last offseason went and all the easily forgotten injuries this season, that is something to be proud of. Well, we didn't forget about the injuries or any of that. And by the way, but here's what I did forget about, and Ben, you're absolutely right. Cry and whine all you want to and say it was terrible and blah, 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 blah. Whoever has that opinion, I would remind that five games were played, four of those games ended with one goal making the difference between the teams. One goal. They were in every one of these games. Bounce here or bounce there. They didn't get those bounces. I understand that. I get it. I'd be the first one to tell you, and I just did. But what I'm saying is they didn't get blown out. They didn't get embarrassed. They were there. They were hanging with a very good team, and they lost the series. But they were in each and every game. Every game they lost was by one goal, two of them in overtime. Okay? So that's, that's fair to point out. And, Ben, good on you for doing that. Uh, Dustin also says, why not uh, keep the pressure on the forecheck at the end of games instead of, instead of letting Tampa just skate into the offensive zone? It seems to happen a lot where the Blue Jackets get a lead and then just sit back. Is this strategy to sit back and clear the puck or players relaxing slash lack of focus? It's the latter. Uh, they relax and maybe they lose their focus. I, I just think they're – I think there are times they are – they get so afraid to continue to be aggressive because they don't want to make an aggressive mistake. And what happens is they lay back and they end up making the exact same mistake for not being aggressive. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. Matt Miller says, is it time to make some big changes? Maybe say goodbye to Cam, Boone, Savard. How much longer do you think we keep torts? Uh, Cam has a no trade, I believe, again next year. I think the first three years of his new deal, and I think next year is the third year. He still has a no trade. Boone Jenner, I was, I was so surprised and disappointed with Boone Jenner as we continue to play. He ended up on the fourth line wing yesterday and didn't have much time. He was off the power play. He was, I mean, he wasn't even a factor. He didn't even have a chance to be a factor. He wasn't even on the ice, uh, which was surprising, very surprising. And Boone's been such a great soldier uh, for years here. I don't know what you could get for Boone Jenner at this point in his career. I know he's got great character and teams would love to have him. I, I just don't know, you know, what kind of a return. He, he would have to be part of a package. If you wanted to get a decent return, I think David Savard, same thing. I, I dread and hate the thought of trading David Savard, but on the same token, um, you know, he, he plays a lot of minutes. He, he plays that heavy game. He blocks a lot of shots and all those things are great. Uh, one thing, there are other defensemen in the league who were that style of defenseman. And when their game started to slip, it didn't slip slowly. It slipped and was gone. And, I'm not saying that's going to happen to David, but I'm saying that it could. It could happen to him. It could happen to anybody. Um, so if he has value, do you look to use that value 
you might, you might. Those, those are not, those aren't terrible guesses on your part. Okay. I don't think they are at all. Um, how much longer do we keep towards? He has one more year on his contract. That's going to be up to John Tortorella, I think. Uh, many times, especially in the last year and a half, he has said it's soon time for him to live his wife's life because she's lived his all these years. Um, I don't want to think about that. I, I don't want to think about anybody else coaching this team. And it's not just because of my relationship with Torts. That's a big part of it. But I think that he's great for this city. I think he's great for this franchise. I think he has turned this franchise into a winner. I think he has done that not single-handedly. Yarmo's had a, a huge hand in it, and when John Davidson was here, he had a huge hand in it. But John Tortorella is – he's the rudder. I think this thing goes as he goes. And I, I think he has done great things here. I've, th- I've said it before. I'll say it again. If he doesn't get the Jack Adams this year, I'm going to be severely disappointed, and I will have wasted what I think is a great vote. But um, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much longer he's going to want to do it. I also don't know what he would do if he's not doing it. He could say he wants to go to the barn and – shoe the horses and all that stuff. And, and that's great for a month. And then he's a hockey coach. It's what he is. It's what he's best at. But again, I, I think that'll be up to him. I don't think that'll be a, an organizational decision. I think that'll be a Tortorella family decision when the time comes. Um, and that's it. Yep. That's it. I've run through them. I run through them all. Uh, I'm sure there's many other questions that you may have on your mind and maybe you didn't send or whatever. Look, I, I just want to thank um, – I have a couple of thank yous. First one is to the fine people at Tell Ohio Credit Union. When I sit down and do this every day, uh, they make it possible. They do. By putting their name on this, uh, I've met them. They are great people. Uh, they believe in me. You know, when you're, when you're doing something like this, uh, you, I need you. I mean, if you don't believe in me as fans, then it's a total waste and – if the people tell Ohio who are putting their name on it, don't believe in me, then it's a complete waste of time as well. And they do. And I appreciate it. And they are, again, they are great people. Just the people that I've met from Del from tell Ohio is why I tell you all the time to go stop at one of their local branches, to call them, to go on their website at tell Ohio.org and look into what they have there because the, the people at the top, the, the people that I deal with, and, and they are important people at the top. If you've got good leadership at the top, it trickles down. Okay. So I know how those people operate and therefore I know how the people in the organization overall are going to operate. And that's why when I tell you about Tell Ohio Credit Union, it's not just because I'm reading a script. In fact, as you know, most times I'm not. Maybe if they change something and they want some different wording, I will, but I'm not reading a script. I'm just telling you what I think and what I feel. And I get that feeling from those people. So I want to thank them again for having their name on this show and, um, and being good people. They have their name on a lot of stuff with the Blue Jackets, but I, I think it really started with this one. They were, they were the people that stepped behind CBJ and 30 and said that they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to be the part of it, and I cannot thank them enough for that. So make sure that you reciprocate and go to tellhive.org and look at the services that they offer. And don't forget, I'm not reading this, but it's true. They have put people above profit since 1934, okay? <laughs> you can be first, not second, not last, first, numero uno. So thank you to Tell Ohio Credit Union. But again, the biggest thanks uh, goes to all of you because without fans, there is no need for this show or any show. There's no need for games. It is your passion that drives all of us. And I I have the passion that you have, and I, I feed off your passion. I hope you feed off mine. I just uh, enjoy doing this for you. And it's been a lot here in these last couple of weeks, and every minute of it has been worth it. Uh, all the feedback that I get from you, as I have today, has been my heartfelt appreciation for you taking the time to listen, to watch. However you take in this Blue Jackets content, thank you for doing so. Um, we have so many good people on the staff and, and we, we crank out so many things. And, and I know that, you know, the guys that are in the forefront on many of these things is uh, Jeff Rimmer and Jody Shelley on TV and me on this show and doing the radio broadcasts and Jeff Sabota, who is the Jackets Insider and writes on the website. You know, we're kind of, we're the frontline people and uh, we all take pride in that. We really do. We take pride in, in bringing the Blue Jackets to you 
as best that we can. And with, um, you know, in my case, with as much insight as I can for you. But if you weren't there, if you weren't buying tickets and, and there's some of you right now that want to and you can't, you got to wait until we figure out what's going on. But if you're not buying tickets, uh, I'm not getting a paycheck and my family and I have a great appreciation for that. I can't even tell you, especially in these times when things are so trying and so many of you are trying to figure out what's going on in your own households. I cannot thank you enough for your support, for your kind words, and for being there, not just for me and my family, but for the entire Blue Jackets family. It means a lot. I speak on behalf of the entire Blue Jackets organization when I say thank you. And when I say as disappointing as it is to get knocked out of the playoffs, there are still great things to come with this organization. I think uh, we have taken a step here overall. As John Tortorella says, no longer are we hoping to win. We are expecting to win. He says that about his players, but as his players expect to win, so do we expect them to win. We expect to be talking into the first and second and hopefully in the future third and fourth round of the playoffs. We expect that now. And there was a long stretch of time where it was only hope, and maybe it was a fleeting hope, but those days are gone. Um, there will be bumps on the road. There will be times that you miss the playoffs, but this is a franchise that is now on the map and on a good course. And Yarmo Kekalainen will continue to navigate that course from a personnel standpoint. And until he decides otherwise, I think John Tortorella is going to navigate it from behind that bench. And as long as those two guys are running this ship, I feel great. I don't even need a life preserver because I ain't worried about this ship going down anytime soon. So again, thank you for being there all year. I know you're disappointed, um, but hey, it's 2020, right? Everything's, uh, everything's strange. And another strange thing is we'll be back at this hopefully right before we all know it. One programming note for you before I leave, Jody Shelley and I will have a uh, final inside edge to wrap up this season. And that is going to be on Wednesday, August 26th. It'll be at 7 o'clock on the flagship station of the Blue Jackets Radio Network, 97.1 The Fan. Don't forget to go to our CBJ Radio SoundCloud page if you have missed any of these shows or any highlights, uh, whatever. It's all right there at your fingertips. I have talked for way too long, but I appreciate it. I'm glad you're still listening. I'm glad you're still there. And I know that you will always be there. So that will do it for today's edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Telhio Credit Union as we wrap up the 2019-2020 season. Until next time, I'm Bob McElligot saying thanks and so long. 